What's up guys, this is Rich here. Um, we got an 809 today on the bench. This unit is actually out of a 2015 Sierra that's right here, that is Cam um, 62 with a Cam in it. Real nasty, we went and upgraded it and stuff, but this is just the old one we're taking apart. And supposedly, this truck, this transmission was rebuilt at some point. So here's the torque converter from this. It's blue, spray painted. I don't know if this, if this is really, was rebuilt because this kind of looks like an original one. I don't know for sure, but you know, gray spray paint over everything, a lot of things. So we've got it in the holding fixture now. We're going to take our handles off of it. And uh, his, another complaint that he had is he also had a, uh, a delay in reverse and a slamming engagement. And on these early um, that actually is from an issue in the stator support uh, itself, and there actually was a bulletin about addressing that with a new part number. So we're going to see if, if they even um, if they, this is going to go everywhere. If they even changed that while they were in there, this looks new. The input shaft O-ring. I mean, it was really hard. Yeah, it's really hard, but. Normally when I get them during like a 6L80 converter failure or other ones, it'll just be black. So this, the fact that this is somewhat green is pretty good. It may have, it probably was replaced, but I don't know for sure. We've already drained this with the level check plug when I pulled it out of the truck, but I just don't like making a huge mess. So here, we're gonna get off our 11 one-time use front cover bolts. You could reuse these if you ha absolutely had to, but there's, there's really no reason to. Um, what are they? They're like 16 cents each or something like that. So, and if you're ordering these for one from a GM dealer, tell the guy you need 11 of them because it'll say AR or as required in the quantity when you go to, when you go to get one of these. So we have 11 of these bolts, okay? These are gonna be junk. We're gonna fill them in this pan over here. All right, and then we are going to get our slide hammers. We're gonna install one of them right here. This will thread in. I don't know the thread from this off the top of my head. I just know that I bought these from an old man who used these for four speeds and two speeds and they work. So whatever, whatever um, threads old slide hammers are for most four speed transmissions, it's probably this, I don't know but they, they seem to work well on the eight speeds. So this is the automatic case front cover. And if I was rebuilding this, I would pull this seal off because this seal is really hard to get off when this covers out of the trans. So we're gonna come up like this. Come in a little bit more. There we go. So our front cover's off. You've got a washer on the back of here. And then you've got a huge O-ring on this. So, I don't know, it doesn't look like they they gelled this or put anything on here because this is really not fun to get in. So that's weird that they put that in totally dry. This is the thickest O-ring GM makes. Thick, this is thicker than a fuel tank locking ring, like a sending unit in a fuel tank. This is a super thick O-ring. So that's why you have to use the bolts to draw it down when you install that. But anyways, here's our, um, here's our drive link. Here's our drive sprocket, and then our driven sprockets underneath here, and then this is our stator support. We're gonna get to that in a second, but here, let's go ahead and get our pan off now. And this thing definitely has clutch failure because it would delay and it would slam in reverse. So I'm suspecting that the one, there's a lot of clutches in this that have really funky numbers. Yep. That is clutch failure, 100%. So we're gonna see, we're gonna see what the issue is. We're gonna see which one it is. There's gotta be something, a clutch that's, that's responsible for reverse that I guarantee you has damage. So here's our filter. I'm sure this is pretty nasty. Um, yeah, well, we, can, we can look at that later, but not gonna see much, just clutch material and stuff in there. So here. 
We're going to rotate the unit this way. And this really is a good sign. They probably replaced this because see how this is a two-piece harness? How you have this bail connector right here and then this? The early GM 8-speeds, when these first came out, um, they actually were just one piece. This whole thing was one piece and they were on, under a special... Or they weren't under a special coverage, but they failed a lot. And let me get this pick over here. And to replace them, you'd have to remove the valve body to do this, to do just this harness. So it seems like this was replaced at some point, which is actually good. Let me get my uh, my my needle nose over here. We get our needle nose. We'll just pull up. I'm really not concerned about that. Okay, we're gonna get this out of here. Every eight speed you do, you need to put a harness in it. There's, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it because they're just known for failing for this temperature sensor in here. This temperature sensor is real bad about failing and it'll cause a P0711 code and it'll shift poorly, all kinds of issues, but really it's lack of maintenance is what makes this fail. So yeah, all that crud just gets inside of there. So here's our harness, we're gonna go then throw him in the pan. Then we are going to blast off our drive link stuff right there. And that's an external plus Torx, same size as the um, bolts that actually hold the valve by to the case. This looks really good, this, this baffle. So they probably replaced this because this is actually white when it comes from GM. The reason this turns red or pink is because of ATF. So this looks like this was replaced. So that's, that is good. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and disconnect our manual valve from our manual shift shaft assembly. Come on, get off of there. This one wants to not be, there we go. We just came off, okay. And then we're gonna disconnect our driven sprocket from our drive link and then we'll go ahead and slide our chain off let our chain come off and then we'll grab both of these actually this way so we've got our drive sprocket our drive link and then our driven sprocket huge huge problem in the eight speeds is that chain actually um, I actually sent in feedback to GM and made them change their manual for diagnostics as to why an eight speed would have no drive in all ranges and they actually modified the service manual. So that's nice, super common issue. And it doesn't do damage to the trans really. It's just the transmission simply stops moving because that's connected to the pump on here. So if your pump is not turning because of that chain of being off, you got nothing. So you have 11, you have 11 of these short one there, deep or long, 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 short. There you go. And you have two shorts in the back and then one, one long one again in the back. So there should be 11 of these. I don't think I'm missing anything. All right, there we go. Oh yeah, we've already, I can already see it right there. We've definitely got some clutch failure and looks like somewhere in one of those these guys, actually, surprisingly, the 1278 reverse and the 12345 reverse do not look bad, which is surprising considering this truck power level. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get our speed sensors off. You have your intermediate, you have your output, and then you obviously, in the front, you have your input on an eight speed. These also, guys, huge failure rate on these you're usually you're going to get a p0717 input speed whatever signal and it'll reset and you won't be able to make it come back on a test drive replace the harness I'm telling you this is a huge problem and it can actually cause the truck not to move and then you shut it off and then sudden suddenly the functionality is restored okay so now we're going to we're going to blast off our 13s for our park rod actuator our parking pole This actually works well because our stator support bolts are also 13s. There you go. He's out of there. 
GM specs those as one-time use, but you can reuse them. They're a very strong bolt. And then our little shift linkage piece right here. All right. We're gonna rotate the unit this way. And then we're going to blast off. We're gonna pull our stator support gasket out of here, which that's new. They did a good job with that. 90, so I guess that might must mean 8L90 because I've never seen that on an OEM or an AC Delco one. Then we've got a washer. Did they not put a washer there? No, they did. Oh my gosh, that's melted. Look at that, guys. I thought that was sealant originally. This is melted. Th this washer is not supposed to look like that. That is not supposed to be that thin and flat. That's weird. Now we're gonna bust out our 13s. And then we're going to see if this is an updated and revised stator support assembly. Let's look on it. 24, 27, 72, 32. Got another one over here that I keep. This is from a 16 or 17 Yukon. Yeah, 24, 27, 72, 32. And I believe the changes that were made to it were somewhere in this passageway right here with this one of these orifices with a, a check ball that's punched into it. And that's for conver converters, something about converter drain back um, and air getting in the unit and then it leading to a delay reverse on the first startup of the day, the first reverse shift of the day. So maybe that wasn't the But I personally believe that whatever they did to this unit, they definitely were into it and did a good job so far aside from this washer incident. Um, but I do not believe they addressed the valve body and we can get we can get to that to more on that. And part of the reason that I think this valve body was not addressed or done is because there's little tabs that go on here that are plastic that actually will hold the halves of a section of this valve body together. And you cannot assemble this valve body without those being there, like that little plastic tab that would go there. So I don't know, but. Most issues in the eight-speed stem stem from the valve body. It's usually never the torque converter that goes bad. People think the torque converter goes bad in an eight-speed. They don't, they shudder. But that's actually not the converter itself. That's simply the fluid being contaminated with moisture that makes the clutch lining in this converter shudder. Very rare to see a converter failure on an eight-speed. Anyways, here's our one, three, five, six, seven. For our input shaft, we've got a black, bearing on the top and it's glued to the washer so we'll just leave him on there we've got our washer and our bearing okay this is actually where end play is set in this unit is is underneath of this this guy right here here's our input shaft or our 13567 and these actually surprisingly don't look too bad we're going to put this in our torque converter as like a little bit of a stand and then we're actually going to come here and if you look real close you can see that there's a snap ring on here on our 13567. So we're gonna try to get our snap ring out. This is a really tiny guy. He's, I mean, he's he's really thin. Let me, let me try to get a pick in there. Wow. Fighting me like this. <sighs> I thought I grabbed the right, the little, these little snap ring pliers usually are what I use for this. There we go. It comes right off. Just a really little one. Okay. They say this is one-time use. I, I don't think it. I don't think it is. We're gonna go 
pop our 13567 out of the turbine shaft assembly. This should be blue if this was replaced. I don't know if it's black in an aftermarket kit or if they never replaced it, but I don't see any blue in here. And you'll always be able to see some blue, always blue, something like that on here. So this looks like it may have been original and just never replaced. The Teflons don't seem to be in terrible condition. Like, you know, like I said before, the eight speed, it's the valve body that causes the problems. So we're gonna look at our one, three, five, six, sevens real quick. And the way that this snap ring sits in here with the opening of it, if you look at that top pressure plate, if you look at that little nub that's on the uh, top back backing plate or pressure plate, that's where the opening of the snap ring needs to be. This one can be fun to get out sometimes. There we go, I actually got it on the first try, oh my God. Okay. This is the only stack that doesn't use a wave plate out of this whole trans. These look really good. Okay, so the catalog is correct. So we've got four steels and four fibers. Oh, there's some heat marks on them. Heat mark on this bottom steel. Okay. But all in all, these really aren't terrible at all, aside from that one slip. Part of why I didn't build a unit for, for this particular vehicle is because service information and, our, and GM's parts catalog has an inconsistency with how many fibers and steels they want in this stack up. This is the only clutch assembly in an 8L90 that has selective counts in terms of fiber or steel plates. So it actually is four fiber and four steel, so good to know. All right, we could take this apart, this uh, return spring and piston and everything, even on a stock truck, there is so much junk underneath of here. If a, if a truck can even go down the road and have no issues, there's lots of O-ring debris from the seals. Okay, so that's our 13567. They're in surprisingly good shape. Now we're gonna rotate the unit this way and it's gonna get a little bit messier. We are going to remove our 23468 and our 45678 reverse clutch assembly. That's this big drum you see in here and our 1278 reverse clutch fluid housing passage seal actually just dropped out. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that. This can be reused. They tell you this is one time use, but it's impregnated with metal, really doesn't go bad. But you don't wanna leave this out because if you leave this out when you do a valve body or anything, you'll have no reverse and no forward because this seals off hydraulic fluid to your 1278 reverse clutch assembly. All right, we're gonna pull this out. cooked. The 23468 already looks bad from here. I wonder if this is our, our, our problem in this unit. Let's see. That already seems kind of loose. Yep. Total failure of the 23468 clutch assembly. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, these are really bad. Whoa, those got really hot. Look at that. They're actually almost bowed from how hot they got. And see, this, in my opinion, is the clutch assembly that makes the biggest difference in the way an 8-speed shifts because the 1278 reverse and the 12345 are already on when you're in drive and you're in lower gear. But when you go shift to second gear and you third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear, and you stop and go traffic, whatever, you're spending a lot of time using this clutch and it's coming on and off. So I think this clutch, the travel of this is the most important if you're gonna really adjust the clutch track. Which GM has a really, GM has a really complex and um, overcomplicated way, in my opinion, of um, checking the clutch travel on this, on this particular unit with like the weights and the load gauge and all this stuff they want you to do. Let me get our, this is our four, five, six, seven, eight reverse. We're getting out. These look okay. Yeah, they're totally, wow. That is so surprising that these look good and that this thing was just so bad in reverse. And we've got a bearing that's actually on something in there. And then we've got another bearing and a spacer under here. These are the same exact bearing, same part number. All right, put these over here. All right, now let me go ahead and 
we are going to remove our direct, um, our direct and our overdrive carriers is what they call these. And then this is our input carrier assembly. We're just gonna lift this out as one big piece. We've got these, these look really good. Yeah, these look really good. These usually don't have issues. Got a planet that's inside of here. Um, that's fine. I've got another one. Our, um, this is actually what splines to two, three, four, six, eight. He looks really good. And then we've got our input carrier assembly itself. We've got a washer on here, and then we've got another washer and another bearing right here. And then on the back of this, we have another washer. And this this piece honestly looks really good. So now we're going to get out our one two seven eight reverse and they want you to compress this first with the press, but if you just get in here like this with this pick, you can work it out. It's really not under too terrible amount of tension. Get them out. I gotta come up a little bit more. There we go. This is the, this is the largest snap ring in this trans, so. And this is technically not an adjustable clutch. The how the uh, the 1278 reverse piston housing could get stuck in the case sometimes. This is basically your center support in this transmission. Okay, so that's why this can kind of this can kind of wear on the outside of this this lug right here. Okay, and this is a molded piston, so we're, this took a lot of abuse. You can see signs of where the return spring was sort of hitting it. So we're going to go ahead and pop our piston out. This is um, this is the only molded piston in this entire trans. So there you go. Now we're gonna pull out our apply plate for one two seven eight reverse, and then our return spring for one two seven eight reverse. You can clearly see the way that this goes with the wear facing here on this guy. There's wear on those. You can put this in upside down in here and you'll still fight this going together, but obviously that's input. So it has to go with this facing up, okay? Now we're gonna pull out our input sun gear. All right, this usually is in very good shape. The bushings in an 8L90 are usually very healthy, um, unless you have catastrophic failure, obviously, but it's our input sun gear. Now we're going to remove our 1278 reverse clutches. That is incredible that these really look good, aside from some little slippage marks. Almost every 8-speed that you ever tear down is, is always going to have hot spotting on the 1278 reverse. Um, part of that is because of the frequency of use of this clutch pack. So you're, it's on when you're taking off at a red light, but it's also on in reverse, and then it's also on on the highway. Another reason is because if you look at this fiber plate, what is different about this fiber plate compared to, say, a four, five, six, seven, eight reverse fiber plate? This has clutch material that's kind of like put on there and those little nubs, little sections. This one is full fiber just all the way around. Okay, so I think that has something to do with it personally, but I could be wrong. Now we're gonna remove our one, two, three, four, five reverse clutch assembly and all of our other output um, components. And this snap ring is in the wrong place. They want this at nine o'clock, but I really don't think it matters. So whoever, whatever guy built this, it's fine. I mean, you see how easy the snap ring is to get out. It's really not, how much tension is really underneath of this, okay? And I like to run a fatter snap ring in mind when I do this. This, I guarantee you, if I were to measure this right now in a micrometer, it would be 2.3 millimeters. I personally like to run a 2.9 millimeter snap ring in my 8L90s for the 12345 reverse clutch assembly. And part of that is because this clutch assembly, out of all the adjustable clutch assemblies in this unit, this has the largest window of um, clutch travel possible. And with the factory ring like this being a 2.3 millimeter, I personally think that that's incredibly loose 
for this clutch. And I and I think that that's part of why you sometimes will get one, two, three, four, five reverse clutch failure, depending on the way the vehicle was operated. But we're gonna pull this out as one big assembly. Let me just go ahead and uh, get one of my favorite tools right here. This is, um, this is made for the eight speed. The way GM wants you to assemble this with everything one way, you absolutely have to have this tool if you are going to assemble this transmission the way GM tells you to. And this is DT50921, okay? I don't assemble eight speeds one way. I, I do it a different way, and you can see that in other videos, but this is actually helpful for disassembling them. So we're just gonna take this whole thing, thread this into the bottom. This actually threads into our output shaft assembly, and then it, everything will come out of one piece. So let me make some space on the bench for this. Just go ahead and get, make sure you're on her. Go ahead and shank her out. Okay, hold her out. We've got our reaction internal gear here, and then we've got our bearing on the top of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift our clutch plates off just gently. Okay. These are surprisingly in incredibly good shape. They definitely went into this unit because there's there's no way that these would look like this if these were not addressed at some point. Their R and R guy didn't do a good job because there were bolts in the wrong place. There was a bell housing bolt strip, which I've never seen done, but whoever built this did a pretty good job. Um, so these are our fibers for one, two, three, four, five reverse. You have three fibers and then you have, I believe two steels in this stack up. And then you have an apply plate and then you have a wave. Okay, so those actually look really good. We're gonna go ahead and get our reaction internal gear off. Right? Then we are going to remove our reaction carrier assembly. He looks good. Then we're going to take this whole assembly right here and flip it over. We've got our case bearing. It can stay and stick. And we're gonna remove our output shaft, our output shaft bearing, our output sun gear, and then we're left with our output carrier assembly. So this is an incredibly strong piece right here. It's really, this can handle a lot of power. These can fail though, and it would, when this happens, it'll just grenade the whole unit. I've only seen it done like once, but there you go, guys. That's an 8L90 pretty much torn down the whole stack up of the unit. And what we will do here now is we're gonna go ahead and take the adapter housing off. And they spray painted this with some, with some funky gray or something. I don't really know if I uh, like this color that much, but. Go ahead and blast these off. This one, see, I told you I would fight that. The reason being, or that this would be tighter and fight it. This bolt is the only bolt in this transmission that actually goes through and is exposed to atmospheric conditions. So like rust and water and stuff and salt, obviously this truck is from New Jersey, but even on, even on Maryland trucks or Northeastern trucks, that one bolt on the case extension is always tighter and then you have to clean the threads. I like to clean the threads before I go back in with that. So, get all of our rear bolts off our case extension. We can tap this, but it probably just lifts that off. There we go. All right, here's our case extension. There's actually a piston. This is a piston itself. There's our retaining ring. Um, yeah, so I wonder if they got a new one from GM or if they, they went and repaired that. But yeah, guys, this is an 8L90 torn down. So I suspect we have got, see an eight speed has so much, so many pieces in it. It's really, really with these modern transmissions, you need two eight foot benches minimum to do them. And, and honestly, that's not even really enough, you know? Um, you could take this valve body apart, but I'm gonna probably do this later and figure out exactly what caused it. But as of now, we have clutch failure in the um, in the two, three, four, six, eight clutch assembly. 
So here's, here's some four, five, six, seven, eight reverse with that over there. We have incredible clutch failure in our two, three, four, six, eight. Okay. And that's really what I can tell, or from what I can tell, the biggest problem with this unit. And I don't believe it was something inside of the clutch assembly itself that caused that failure. I personally think it was something in this valve body, as well as a combination of this truck, um, the way it's tuned, the way it's driven, the engine and everything. But like I said, for whoever rebuilt this, they did a pretty, pretty good job aside from the color of the case. I really like that. So anyways, guys, we're going to have more H-Speed stuff on the way. Thank you for watching.